Okay guys, uh, so today we're going to do something uh, a little different with our Ed puzzle. And what we're going to do today is we're going to get to know a little bit of the interesting uh, elements of the life of our next author. We're going to be reading uh, Peace From Tomorrow. That author would be Edgar Allan Poe, one of our most famous American authors and known uh, for his very unique style of writing. And I like to do this before we read his work, uh, because once you have read his work, and we'll get to read one piece together this year, you'll get to read uh, another piece next year in eighth grade, and even more as you get into your freshman year. But over the course of the next three years, it's very helpful to know a little bit about this author because you're going to read his work and you're going to finish reading it and stop and pause and go, who in the world writes this kind of stuff? And to know a little bit about the tragedies that make up Edgar Allan Poe's life is to understand the man and to understand the man means that you would better understand his work. So um, this is going to be um, an Ed Puzzle uh, that you're going to do, um, not necessarily know the answers to, uh, but you are going to be um, quizzed on what you think the blanks will be filled in with, and then I'll reveal those answers to you and talk a little bit about some of those with you as we go. So we're going to focus on four parts of Edgar Allan Poe's life as we go through. Uh, we're going to look at the early years of his life and how, in some ways, he was really doomed from the start. Uh, really had a rough start to life uh, in, from birth uh, through the first few years of life, even into um, college. And then we're going to look, as he goes into college and beyond, um, how he was looking for an identity. I'm trying to figure out who he was and um, what he was going to be about. And trying to overcome some of the tragedies he had early on in his life. And this leads to the third part we're going to cover, which is titled A Dark Life. And he does have a, a pretty dark life um, because of the experiences in it. And then we'll wrap up looking at some of the common story themes that you see in his work. Let's start with the early years of his life. Now, Edgar Allan Poe uh, was born um, on January 19th in Boston. His parents were traveling. Traveling actors. Now, traveling actors in that time period would travel from town to town looking for plays and theaters to be a part of, and it didn't bring in a lot of money. It wasn't very stable, guaranteed work, and even when it, they did get paid for the work, it wasn't very much. And so he was born uh, in, to traveling actors in Boston on January 19th of the year, 1809. A year later, January, December 10th, 1810, Edgar Allan Poe had a sister. Uh, her name was Rosalie. Uh, shortly before birth uh, of his sister, or even possibly just before it, Poe's father deserted the family, leaving his mother alone with three children. So he is barely uh, two years old and already has lost a parent to abandonment. Uh, dad walks out in the family, never returns, leaving mom with the three kids. So he's young and he's already lost a parent. When he is... Two, Edgar's mother Elizabeth, his birth mother, 
falls ill with a disease called tuberculosis, uh, very common for the time period, and she dies. So he's two years old now, and he has already lost two parents. And he is orphaned along with his siblings, but they're not kept together. Through adoption, they are split up. And a couple named Mr. and Mrs. John Allen from... A city named Richmond adopt him, not his siblings, just him. And so you'll notice that his name is Edgar Allan Poe, which means the middle word of that Allen is not his middle name. It's the adopted name of his adopted parents, Mr. and Mrs. John Allen. So they take him in and things you would think would be uh, a little more secure for him as he's gotten off to a rough start. Uh, you'd like to believe that things would turn for the better. Unfortunately, they don't. Two years um, after his father, this is about 10 years um, after he's been adopted, his adopted father, John Allen, inherits a huge fortune. And he sends Edgar at the age of 17 to the University of the State University, the University of Virginia. But for some reason, whether he didn't want to or could not, sends Edgar with less than a third of the money he needs to pay for school. So, for example, if school costs three thousand dollars he sent edgar for some reason with less than a thousand dollars to pay for school maybe he just wanted to get rid of him or get him out of the house so edgar had to find another way to make money to pay for schooling so he soon took up he took up gambling he have gotten card games and other games of chance to try and make money to pay for his expenses. Unfortunately, he was not very good at gambling. And he was already short of the money he needed to be in college at the University of Virginia. And he was so bad at gambling, he actually lost more money than that. And he ended up losing... $2,000. He went $2,000 in debt. Now, this is in the 1800s, so money back then uh, went a lot further than it does today. And so, if this was taking place in our current time period, for him, it was $2,000. For us, that would be more like probably $20,000. So, he was really, really in a tough spot, um, having lost two parents uh, one to death, his mother, one to abandonment, his father, having a unsupportive adopted family, sending him away to college with less money than he needed, um, and then getting into debt trying to pay for it. He starts looking for an identity. Maybe college isn't for him, so he can't support himself. He can't you know, get himself through college. So he decides he's going to join the military, and he decides to join the United States Army. He becomes uh, a member of the United States Army. And then in 1829, when he's 20 years old, his adopted mother, Mrs. Allen, she dies, and Edgar returns home. So this is now at 20, he's lost three parents, two siblings, and he's got an unsupportive adopted father, has dropped out of college, and he's only 20 years old. Once he returns home, he decides that maybe he's going to pursue this military thing for a little bit. Maybe he's going to um, take up military as his career. So he decides to enroll at a place where we train military officers as a career. 
people who want to be in the military as their job. So he decides to enroll at West Point, which is a college in New York, New York State, that trains military uh, officers who want to do the military for a career. But he doesn't apparently think that's his long-term goal because two years later, in 1831, Poe gets tired of being in the military, realizes it's not for him, and he gets kicked out of West Point, the college for military officers. He gets kicked out, kicked out on purpose. A year later, when he is 23, he decides that maybe he's going to take up writing. Maybe he, uh, at some point in life, he had done some, found himself to be successful, enjoyed it. So he decides he wants to become a writer. And he writes some short stories and decides that he is going to submit them to magazines. Now, if you think about the course of his life so far and how things have been going, I bet you can probably imagine that one of these is probably not likely and uh, they were not. Um, they were not, definitely not one of these. So he submits these stories. He's 23 years old, trying to be a writer, but his stories are rejected. They don't want to publish his work. They don't even either like them or think they're good enough. So now he has failed as a college student. He's failed as a military member. He's failed as a writer. He's lost three parents to death, two siblings to adoption, and has an unsupportive uh, adopted father, has a gambling debt, a lot of trouble in his life, and he's only 23. At that point, he sends a letter to his adopted father, John Allen, who, remember, had inherited this large fortune of money, and he writes a letter to Mr. Allen asking for help to kind of get restarted and kind of get on a new track and back on his feet. So he writes a letter asking for help, and his letter is ignored. Doesn't even return the letter uh, to him saying that he got it, just ignores Edgar's letter altogether. Uh, in 1834, when Edgar is 25 years old, now his adopted father, John Allen, dies. And when a person dies, they have a thing called a will that says what they want done with their money and their belongings uh, now that they're di they've died and how they want those things handled. And so when the will was read, John Allen decided to leave Edgar, that's right, he left him nothing. Despite having a large fortune, despite having Edgar in his life for many, many years, does not want anything to do with him and leaves him nothing in his will. So all this has been a really dark life, but even at this point, it continues to get a little bit darker. In May of 1836, Edgar Allan Poe gets married, but it's not who you might expect. Oh, no, it's definitely not his sister. That would be gross. It's his cousin named Virginia. And Virginia, when she gets married to Edgar Allan Poe, Edgar is 27, and she is, if you think you knew where this is going, you probably did. Virginia is 13 when she marries Edgar Allan Poe. So he's 27, she's 13. He's married his cousin, Virginia. At this point, uh, in 1845, he publishes what most people probably think is his most popular, most 
famous, most well-known work uh, has been read and reread and created in different forms. Even a Simpsons episode included this poem called The Raven. So he publishes The Raven in 1845, and it is wildly... You might not have guessed this one, wildly successful. It is widespread popular, and it brings him fame and fortune. He is finally wealthy. His life seems to be on track, though you might think life on track does not include being married to your 13-year-old cousin. But he's married, he's famous, he's successful, he's wealthy. And he decides to take some of that money that he has earned from his fame and buy a magazine, like buy the company that produces or makes this magazine. The magazine he decides to purchase is called the Broadway Journal. And when he purchases it, usually you try and look for things that are uh, successful, that you want to be a part of, things that are going to make you money. Well, when he buys this magazine called the Broadway Journal, it is a doomed enterprise. It is destined to fail. It is destined to go out of business. And it turns out that he loses a lot of money by purchasing this magazine company that was already in bad shape. So we've now learned he is also apparently a bad businessman. Lost four parents, two siblings, dropped out of college, dropped out of the military, married his 13-year-old cousin, uh, failed businessman. You can see how a dark life is probably appropriate for this part of the introduction to Edgar Allan Poe. But unfortunately, it gets worse. In 1847, in 1847, Poe's wife, his cousin, Poe's wife, Virginia, dies from tuberculosis, uh, just like his mother did. Uh, Virginia dies from tuberculosis. So now he's lost his wife. And having this happen in his life, somebody he cared about, somebody he was married to, it sends him into this downward spiral of... Well, certainly not infomercial shopping, right? He's not out there buying stuff on TV late night to cope with the loss of his wife. Uh, it's actually alcoholism. He starts drinking heavily and to try and cope with the loss and all the terrible stuff. Maybe it's caught up to him at this point. And in November of 1848, uh, he proposes to a new person, Sarah Helen Whitman, who uh, you might be happy to hear is not a family member. Uh, Sarah Helen Whitman is someone he has met and falls in love with. She says she will marry him if he does one thing, if he stops drinking. So initially he says yes, that he'll do that, but eventually he cannot live up to that promise uh, cannot stop drinking, and she calls off the engagement. She breaks up with him. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? Man, this guy's been so, you know, on hard luck that it was probably like an hour or a day. Um, it was a little longer than that, just a little. Um, she actually calls off the engagement a month later. So 30 days, he cannot go without the struggle he has with alcoholism. A year later, uh, 1849, he's 40 years old now. He's engaged for a third time to a different person now. And he is convinced his, his childhood sweetheart, a girl he liked when he was younger, named Elmira Royster Shelton to become his fiance. So they're planning on getting married. He also decides to join uh, a group called the Sons of Temperance, which is a support group 
for people who struggle with drinking uh, in order to try and kick that habit that has plagued him for a long time. So he seems to be on the right track. He is a successful writer. He's written many great things at this point, many famous stories. Um, he has engaged to a woman who he really likes. Um, he's joined this group to stop drinking. It seems that his life is finally turning around. Just a month later, in September of that same year, he leaves Richmond, Virginia, where he's been living, and he's on his way back to Philadelphia for some business he had to do, but apparently he got on the wrong train at the Richmond train station. Now, nobody knows why, but over the course of the years of having this conversation with students as I typically do, um, it's a common consideration or a common thought that maybe he had been drinking again and didn't know which train he was getting on. And he was trying to go to Philadelphia, but he actually ends up in Baltimore. Now, interesting side note on him ending up in Baltimore. If you are a uh, fan of the NFL, the National Football League, you know that there is a professional football team in Baltimore, and their name is the Ravens, named after the famous Edgar Allan Poe poem, The Raven. So that's a little bit of trivia you can use when you're watching uh, them play anytime in the future. They are named after his famous poem. So he shows up in Baltimore, and a week later, he is found half conscious, kind of half alive, uh, half knocked out in a gutter. So lying, lying on the side of the street uh, where the sidewalk meets the road in a gutter, and he's taken to a hospital. And he dies there on October 7th. 1849, so just about 40 years old, almost 41 when he dies. So a very, 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 very tragic life that Edgar Allan Poe has. Because of all this tragedy he had in his life, there are some very common themes because of that life that find its way into his writing. First, there are some strange components that are present in every story. Things that are weird or odd. And there always seems to be a horror-filled ending. Something that just makes you gasp or your eyebrows raise or your jaw drop. There's always some kind of horror-filled ending. The setting of his stories, if you think about his life and being a dark life, you would guess that the setting as far as the time of day this, these stories take place is typically nighttime because of the horror-filled feeling of the stories. Usually in his stories, sunlight is thought to be or represent good and darkness is thought to represent evil. As far as the architecture goes, um, it's usually gothic in nature, um, and there's always going to be some sort of eerie presence of strangeness. So there's going to feel like there's always just something about to happen. Some odd thing's going to happen. Something's going to jump out. Some tragedy's going to happen without warning. Some surprising things are going to startle you, and it's just kind of always lingering in the background. There's always a fear that of what's happening, going to happen next. And because of this, there's always going to be uh, a gruesome filled ending, something that makes you go, oh, or Ugh. some kind of gruesome filled ending. And there's always a terrifying occurrence. A terrifying occurrence is always, always going to happen in the stories of Edgar Allan Poe. So, there's a little bit about the author, Edgar Allan Poe, as we get ready to experience 
his work tomorrow called Annabelle Lee. <laughs>